So the operations out here on two th old 231 today are, are, are kind of an example of what we do throughout the year trying to repair our county roads. It's been close to two decades since we started this whole process and our guys have gotten really good and uh, this process right here that we're doing today is uh, really a, uh, uh, a key element now of our maintenance program where back in the early 2000s when we first experimented with it we just knew we had to do something different and come up with a, a better way to to attack these problems and as we normally do we just uh, go anywhere from that 6 to 12 inch depth and depends on the condition of the road the thickness of the asphalt but just trying to get it all to transition and be smooth and again if we'd had to come in here and dig all this stuff out and get rid of the native material and bring in some either crushed stone or soil aggregate uh, it would tie up all our resources, so we can do this much quicker than, than what uh, we previously had done, which is what attracted to us to this process years and years ago. We started about 30 pounds per square yard, where the tanker is putting out the bulk cement, and then the, uh, the zipper is doing about half a lane at a time. That's what we were uh, putting out. I think they, they modify that uh, at minimal amounts throughout the, the process, depending on the condition of the road. and what they're finding when they actually um, zip through the, the asphalt um, surfaces. But yeah, 30, 30 pounds per square yard. Luke and his guys have upgraded to a uh, cement tanker. Um, we didn't do that initially because we were on tight roads and things of that nature, but the way that the market has kind of driven us, it's more cost effective for us to go get tanker loads at a time. And we just figure out how to navigate in those small areas. If we were having to haul this native material out and bring in either engineered material or um, or bring it from a borrow pit, some soil aggregate or something like that, and we can't be nearly as effective as we can doing this process. And we get a better product here with the cement stabilization. We could probably count on two hands the number of roads in the last two decades that we've done that uh, we've had to go back and do repairs to in the same exact location where we cement stabilized. Uh, the very first demo that we did, I remember a guy by the name of Robert Taylor that was working for the Cement Association. He went to the local hardware star, store and bought uh, several bags of bulk cement and we just demoed the machine and tried everything from just zipping the existing material to adding some stone in and mechanically stabilizing to the cement stabilization. And uh, end of the day, the cement stabilization is what's won out for us and it's proven to be the best product. I think in, in the two decades that we've been doing the zipping process, we're, we're getting close to 700 miles of, of roads that have been reclaimed and, and reworked. So when you have a, a total network of 1,000 miles, that's a pretty good little stretch of, of roads that, uh, now keep in mind, not every road is from one end to the other reclaimed, but uh, what you're seeing right here is a good example where we're going in to fix some bad places and and then we're going in on top of that and resurfacing the entire road, either by our own forces with chip seal or surface treatment, or we're having a contractor come in and put an asphalt overlay. Or in some cases, we were putting in uh, microsurfacing on top of that and putting a cape seal on top of what our guys had chip sealed. Luke took over as our chief engineer back in uh, 2017, and uh, he's been at the helm since then. He took the process that was started while I was county engineer, and they've been continually uh, working to fine tune that. He's done an excellent job getting that uh, process in place. We've learned a lot and been able to present a lot of benefit to our citizens through this process. Um, last year we won a pavement preservation award, a national award. Um, this process was key in that um, program because without this a lot of those preservation treatments were not things that we could even consider. One thing I wanted to, to talk about, you he mentioned uh, how easy this process is. We, we've had a lot of turnover the past few years. So we've got a new supervisor, a uh, new guy on the motor grader, the roller, uh, the broom, that kind of stuff. But it, once they learn this, this setup, it's easy to teach the next, the next generation to come in and do it. They just put this cement out, zip it up, uh, get the equipment lined up behind it to roll it down, to wet it, get it in place, and then they're able to move on to the next spot. It, it's, a, it's a pretty mobile operation. This was three, three miles in in a week's worth of time or four working days. And on top of that, you're getting the ceiling done as well. So we typically would have to wait and do the ceiling after the fact. So they've sped it up to where they can do all that at one time. What we initially do is get our inspectors out here. Uh, they, they walk the entire roadway 
and they mark the base failures where, where the pavement is actually uh, coming up, whether it's, it's alligator cracking or uh, the pavement's been pushed to the side or the pavement's even completely gone. So they'll mark all those places uh, ahead of time. So when our construction crews move in, they already see the areas that are that are highlighted and, and delineated of, of where to zip. Uh, so they roughly know how many square yards that they're going to have to do for this entire project. Uh, so then we get the equipment moved out here. And once uh, once all the equipment is out here, we start placing cement uh, in, within those areas that, that our inspectors had marked previously. So we, we bring the asphalt zipper across that. We, we're mixing the cement in with that existing base. Uh, we get a good blend of material. Uh, we've got rollers out here. We've got smooth drum roller out here. We, we come out there, we, we try to add moisture to it so it help hydrate the cement and, and really lock everything in place. Every now and then we'll have to add a, have a motor grader here uh, to keep things smooth, to keep our cross slope in, in check, uh, especially if we're going through any curves or anything like that. So motor graders, we don't have to use it on every site, but we have it if we're doing long stretches, we'd be sure to have a motor grader on site to, to, to keep that crown in the roadway to, to help with drainage. And we bring the rollers across it, get it compacted. As soon as everything's rolled and compacted in place, and we get it swept off and get it clean, we try to put a surface over the top of that just as soon as we can to, to cover it up and lock everything in place. The residents are glad to see us show up um, when, when we get here. Uh, they're also glad that it doesn't take very long. Uh, they're very appreciative of, of how quickly it, it took to get it done and, and very thankful for how the road, how smooth the road is after all the, all the work is completed. After everything's said and done, a lot of times that's the smoothest place on, on, the, road. on the road. You know, and then we get the overlays done and the fact that we can get traffic back on it and the delays are minimal is, uh, is a key element to us, you know, being, uh, being able to do this and, and be successful at it. We've talked about how much it saves us time and money. So yeah, it's about an 80% savings. Doing this method versus the, the old traditional method of digging out and replacing with, with good material, it, it is about an 80% savings on, on the patching cost. You know, there are a lot of groups that did reclaiming and reclamation. They had the big full depth reclamation machines. We just couldn't venture into that market and justify the initial investment. And uh, when we saw the zipper Almost two decades ago, it, it put us in a place where we knew we could get into that, that market and having the ability to use the asphalt zipping equipment, depending on what size and what type of existing equipment you have. But it has been cool to watch the evolution of this from going from our 30 inch machine all the way up to uh, the, the machine we have right now, the six foot models. And I know those guys, they love that six foot machine because they can just blow and go. One other thing I'll say about the whole process is our elected officials had to buy into all this and we had to show them what we were going to do and how we were going to do it. And so it took us a little time to transition into that. So uh, if you got to start somewhere and go with a smaller machine and then move your way up, that's not uncommon. You got to get them accustomed to it. And now that the elected officials see it, and we've been through a number of county commission groups in this uh, over the last uh, two decades doing this, but they understand the, the value of it and understand the fact that doesn't detract from the traveling public uh, as much as if we had to just shut the whole road down and dig it up and start from scratch. Early on, we talked about how places that would take us three weeks to fix, you know, we could do it in, in a handful of days. Um, that still holds true.